In this video, we're going to take a look at a challenge that I made for the Cyberspace 2024 CTF. And it's a web challenge. I'm not too sure of the name yet, maybe unlocked. And yeah, this is what it looks like. It is the world's coolest app. And it's quite simple. You've got a home, you've got a release, and you've got a feature. If you try and go to the feature page, it just redirects you back to the home because we need to check if the new feature is available. And if we go there, we'll see that there is a countdown. So maybe we would like to have a look at the source code and see if there's something going on with the JavaScript, but there's nothing of interest here. In fact, it's actually using a release timestamp, which is being provided by the server. So we need to go and have a look at the server side code, which we will do now. Actually, just before we have a look at the code, I just want to give a shout out to Cowercoint, who made this one day, one letter challenge for the WANI CTF a couple of months ago. And I thought this challenge was really cool and kind of inspired me to make the first part of this challenge. Basically, the idea was you go to the website, you can only access one letter of the flag per day. But if you had a look at Burp, you would see that there is actually a post request being sent with a timestamp, but you can't modify it because of the signature. So you had a look at the code and you're basically able to go and create your own server and just update the time server here. And then because you sign it with your own key, you can modify the timestamp. So I basically just created a script that would do that for like 12 days. So you can see it just updates the timestamp each time does this 12 times and then you end up getting back the full flag. I hadn't seen this in a CTF before and I wanted to do something similar, but obviously not the same. So hopefully this challenge is different enough that people don't get bored of it. Okay, so I'm on the server side code now and I'm just looking at the release route because this is what we wanna do, right? We wanna make sure that we can access this unreleased feature. And the first thing it'll do, it will get a access token and if that exists and if it's valid, it will give us access to the feature. So we need that token but it is signed with this secret key, so we can't just create a token. What's the next part? It's gonna set a validation server to the default validation server, which we can see is another service running on port 5001. And then it's gonna check if there is a debug parameter set, and if there is, it will get our preferences cookie, which again, let's see up here. So preferences, we've got a default preferences as a theme and a language, so it's gonna get that, and that's base64 encoded, as you can see there and it will read the validation server from that cookie if it's available. If not, it'll just use the default again. And then it's gonna get onto the validation stuff. So the idea here is that if, as long as we have the debug parameter set in the URL and a validation server in the cookie, then we should be able to have it read from our validation server instead of the intended one. So let's go to the web page again. Let's take a look at the cookie. We can go ahead and decode this. So I'll echo that and then base64-d. There we go. That is our cookie. Let's actually, we need to go and create a new one, right? So I'll just open up Cyberchef here. I'll take a copy of this. I don't know why Cyberchef is always so slow to load, but all right, it's done now. And the validation server we want then to be set to something that we control. Let me go to set up my subdomain. So there we go, that's now running its forwarding traffic to 1337. And now I can just go here and do cats.tunnel2.dev, I think. All right, I don't wanna save that, I want to encode it. All right, 2 base 64 let's go back here. Let's go and put this in. Let's hit refresh and are we going to get a hit in the server log? No, because we didn't set the debug parameter. So we need to set this to true. And then hopefully now we'll get one. No. Okay. What is it? All right. It's because I don't know what the correct address is. Oh, it's just because I'm missing the HTTPS. That'd help, I guess. All right. All right. All right. Let's go. Cookies. Paste it in. Refresh. And this time... We now get a connection, but we're getting a 500 response. It's looking for a public key. So I guess we need to go and dig back into the code and see what's going on. And in doing so, we'll have a look at the validate server function. So it's going to call this. It's going to get a date from this validate access, and it's going to check if that is greater than the release date. And validate access is going to get the public key, which is going to make a request to the validation server slash pub key. So that's exactly what we just saw. It tried to request a public key off us, and we didn't have one to give it. So that didn't work. What's it gonna do after that? Let's see, all right, so validate access, it gets the public key, and then it's gonna try and make a request to the validation server. It's gonna get the response as JSON, and it's looking for a date element in that JSON response. 
It's then going to make sure that the data was signed with the private key, which corresponds to the public key that was just retrieved from the validation server. So if we go over to the validation server, let's see what it's doing. It has this public key root, which just returns the public key. And it has just an index root, which will get the current time. It'll SHA-256 it, and then it'll sign it. And that will be returned. So we need to basically recreate this on our end. First, we need to generate the keys. So you can see here, I have a script which will just generate a public private key pair. And then we want to run an attacker server, which is going to do the same thing as the validation server, really. It's going to respond with a public key if we call the public key roots. And then if we call the index root, it's going to generate a time, it's going to sign it with our private key, and then it's going to return that. And then the server will use the public key that we provided to verify that it matches, which of course it will. So it should be valid. And you can see then I've just set the date on this to be 14 days in the future so that we're guaranteed to ensure that the feature will be accessible. So that means all I need to do is run the Python server. As you can see, we're now running it. It is on port 1337, which is being forwarded to the external domain. So now if we just go and refresh the page, this time it says go to new feature. And if we have a look at our cookies, we'll see that we now have an access token. So every time we access this page, we'll be able to get to that new feature. And if we click it, we'll go through and see that we've got a word count feature. Enter some text and we'll count the word for you. So I'll put in some text and count words and it'll come back and say that the word count is four. If we take a look at our server log, we'll also see, yeah, we got the 200 okay on the public key and on the index route, which is why that went through. Is there anything in the web logs as well? And uh, nothing particularly of interest. Okay. All right. So that's it. That was part one of the challenge. I hope that was good. I don't know. Maybe it was too similar to the one in the one ECTF. I tried to make it different. It's not doing a daily thing. So the attack script has to be quite different. And also it's via the cookie rather than a post request that you can modify and stuff like that. But I don't know. We'll see what people think of it. Anyway, part two is quite simple. Let me go to the main.py again. Let's have a look at the feature. Here we are, feature. Okay, so it's gonna make sure that we have access, which we do, and then it's gonna take a post request. It's gonna pass our input to this command and then it's gonna execute the command. So obviously that's bad. We need to make sure any user input that's being passed to a command is first sanitized to make sure there's no dangerous commands in it. And that isn't happening. However, we do have the thing here that it's passing it to word count, which means if I was to go in here and just say, okay, let's just try command injection. I'll just do like test and then LS and do count words and, okay, it came back with a non-error. Okay, let me do test ls, let's try that, count. Okay, so it came back with eight, so that it didn't match the number of words. Maybe it's actually running the ls command and it's coming back with the number of files that are in there. Let me try and do, I'll do test and I'll do ls dot dot slash. Yeah, so now it comes back with one item. So yeah, basically we don't have command output, so we need to, exfiltrate any data that we want or any command output that we want in some blind fashion. And there's some different ways to do that. You could maybe find a writable directory on the website and then just go and write your command output to there so you can access it. Maybe like an images folder or something like that. Another option is to use some existing tools that are on the system like curl or something like that to basically make a connection out to your server. Curl, let me take a copy of my web server address. All right, so we want to curl this and then we want a parameter here. I don't know, like flag or let's do C equals, which is normally for the cookie, but don't matter. All right, and then we want it to be the output of cat flag.txt. There we go. So I believe that should work. However, there might be some special characters in it which we want to take care of. Oh, and in terms of finding the flag as well, you can just see here it is flag.txt. You can have a look at the Docker file and see that flag.txt is copied over or that everything is copied over anyway. So yeah, let me then base64 encoder. Actually, did I have, all right, I already had my solution here. So yeah, cat flag, pass it through to base64. It just means if there are any special characters which wouldn't come through in the flag, you'll still get those as well. And there we go. Let's hit count words. Let's go back to our server and you'll see then we have this base64 encoded flag. Now we can just go back and just say, all right, we just want to echo that to base64-d. 
all right, that's not the real flag. The flag uh, hasn't been set yet. But yeah, that's how we can solve this challenge anyway. And for anybody wondering why there's a little Grateful Dead dancing bear in the top left-hand corner of the screen, I was going to add a video. I went to see the Dead & Company in the Sphere in Las Vegas whenever DEF CON was on, and it was incredible. If you're interested in seeing what it's like inside the Sphere, you can go and find some videos on Instagram. But very, very cool. I didn't realize there was like haptic feedback in the seats as well. So at some parts, it felt like the stadium was going to collapse. It was crazy. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. Thanks.